Hello and welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. When you see a cringe-worthy scene like this, you immediately feel bad for the motorcyclist, right? You experience empathy. But my guest today feels more than just empathy. He says his body can physically feel the experience of others. Dr. Joel Salinas, a neurologist and author of Mirror Touch, has a trait called Mirror Touch Synesthesia. He joins me now to explain. Uh, I got to tell you, I am not very familiar with synesthesia, uh, this mirror touching synesthesia. What is it? So the easiest way to help you all understand what mirror touch is would be for me to say that what I see someone else feel physically, emotionally, my brain makes me literally feel too. So if you're slapped on your right wrist, I feel like I'm slapped on my left wrist. If really? You're, that's right. If you're gasping for air, I feel like I'm gasping for air. If you have a headache, I feel like I have a headache. Because of mirror touch, my brain categorizes you and me as the same person and tries to recreate your experience based on the situation and my own past experiences. Are we talking about an electrical impulse that you feel, a chemical mm. reaction, is it some sort of energy transmission through touch? It's completely brain-based. Um, so there's, it's not like a psychic experience or anything like that at all. Um, so it's, uh, it's synesthesia overall means kind of blending of the senses, and this just happens to be a blending of sight that gets translated by the brain, my brain, as touch. So as an example, as I began to see patients who had Tourette syndrome, I was seeing a patient who developed self-mutilating tics. And so what he does is he, he chews on the inside of his mouth, grinds his teeth, and he pushes against his face with his right, knuckle to the right. point where he began to split apart his mouth like shredded beef. Right. And as I'm seeing him do this, I feel a painful buzzing shooting through my cheek and into my teeth. It's like there's a stun gun being pushed up against my face and being triggered with each one of his tics. So as a, as a, as a well-trained doctor that you are and as a neurologist, which is an incredible, fascinating medical uh, specialty, how do you incorporate that into your clinical management? Yeah, being a brain doctor with mirror touch means that I'm more likely to share a deep connection with my patients, including their pain, but also ultimately their care. So having a chance to really sit with my patients and feel that for them to feel like I have a real stake in their experience and in their health can be really reassuring for them. Um, but in the case of like an emergency, for example, that's when the mirror touch can actually be a little problematic where I might be distracted by the experience of the patient. And in those Rather cases- Rather than, than sort of putting yeah, together a differential through, diagnosis exactly, and all that. Exactly. Let's talk about a very delicate uh, topic. Mm -hmm. How does it feel when a patient is dying? Mm. So the first time I saw a patient, I was actually when I was a medical student, and that was a really intense experience, and that's actually how I opened up the book. Uh, you know, I, I, as I saw this patient in a cardiac arrest on the floor, as he's getting chest compressions, I feel like I'm getting chest compressions on my chest. As he gets a breathing tube slid down the back of his throat, I feel like a sharp sensation is being slid down the back of my throat. And when he actually dies, it's, the way I describe it, it's almost like all the physical sensations that I've been mirroring just kind of go away. Um, it's like having been in a, in a room where there's an air conditioning running in the background and that hum suddenly just stops and there's just eerie silence. And at that moment, I had to will myself to breathe. I actually had to run off and go to the bathroom and actually throw up and take some time to actually kind of bring myself back into my own physical bodily experience. When did you discover that you had this trait? In medical school, did you feel it that you had it before growing up mm. as a teenager? Yeah, I always had a sense there was something different about me, but I always just chalked it up to being a weird kid. Uh, I even have memories of watching cartoons and as I see Bugs Bunny chewing on a carrot, I feel like I'm chewing on a carrot. Or if Wile E. Coyote gets hit by a truck, I feel like I'm hit by a truck. But it was only until my first year in medical school that I learned about synesthesia and mirror touch and began to learn how to harness its benefits and help other people through this ability. Did, you have, story. To, did you have to seek help yourself? Because it was, in, was it interfering with your natural, you know, whirly mm. environment? Did you have to seek help? Yeah, for me, you know, the, I consider myself one of the lucky people with mirror touch in that 
I was able to find a way to apply the mirror touch in my profession, and that's part of been part of my journey is actually learning how to how to manage that experience with with other patients. Um, but other people with mirror touch aren't as lucky. Some of them become total shut-ins where they actually don't leave their home. Yeah, There's I mean, I could see becoming a, a little right. bit of a. I don't want to say mental health issue, but certainly a trade that would make you sometimes not being able to, to kind of socialize and, mm -hmm. and, and be tagged with something else. And, right. Um, uh, yeah, I found for, for me, after that first kind of uh, experience with the, with the patient dying, I really made a decision that if I was really going to be there for patients, that I had to figure a way around this, this experience. And, one of the ways I did that was actually, rather than avoiding those experiences, actually throw myself into as many intense experiences uh, as possible. Have you met with a similar, and let's, you know, I, mean, I, I, think, I think in the medical profession, mm -hmm. a profession, you know, mirror touch uh, could uh, bring in, new aspects of helping patients deal with their own symptoms. I don't know many, many doctors with mirror touch. I, I, I actually haven't really heard of any doctors with mirror touch, but I, there is a nurse who has mirror touch, a pediatric nurse. Um, and then I've met some other people. Um, one woman uh, actually, because of the mirror touch, decided to become really involved in pet grooming because the experience of, uh, with the pets is less intense than being around people. Right. And actually, uh, her whole neighborhood now brings her all of their animals to groom. And she's amazing at it because she's so in tune with the animals. So your book, uh, Mirror Touch, uh, a memoir of synesthesia and the secret life of the brain. What's the purpose of the book? Why did you write it? I think mirror touch, whether you have it or not, will make you rethink every interaction you have. People who've read Mirror Touch usually learn something powerful about themselves, and part of that is because we all struggle with communicating, connecting, and especially setting the right boundaries with the people we love and care for, not to mention the people that we work with day to day. And I think Mirror Touch opens up a fresh, interesting, and really important path to understand and figure this out because it begins to uncover some of the mystery behind how we relate with one another. Well, listen, I, uh, I, I love the idea and I thank you for coming. Where can people get more information on the book? People can just go to uh, mirrortouchbook.com. Right. Really easy. All right. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. And if you have a health question, send a tweet to Fox News Health. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.